This is CNN Breaking News. Welcome to our viewers here in the United States and around the world. I'm Wolf Blitzer in the Situation Room. We're following breaking news. The growing threat of extremist violence right here in Washington, D.C. could lead to major security changes over at the U.S. Capitol. The acting Capitol Police Chief is now calling for permanent permanent fencing and backup forces ready to be deployed at a moment's notice. This, as we learn very disturbing details about a man arrested with a gun and 20 rounds of ammunition right near the Capitol building. According to court documents, he had contact information about multiple representatives and senators and stop the steal paperwork, a reference to former President Trump's failed attempt to overturn the presidential election. The House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is weighing in on the growing threats. Uh, she says the push for new security measures is being hobbled because of what she calls the enemy is within the House of Representatives, a clear swipe at some of her Republican colleagues. Let's go straight to CNN's Brian Todd. He's got more on the breaking news, the tightening security issues uh, going on at the U.S. Capitol. Brian, tell us what you're learning. Wolf, just this morning, Capitol Hill police arrested a man who they say attempted to gain access through a security checkpoint near the Capitol. Then police say he attempted to elude officers. Then he resisted arrest. Another sign of high tension around the Capitol, a dramatic request a short time ago from the acting Capitol Hill police chief. Strong signs of a Capitol on edge tonight. The acting Capitol Hill police chief says she'll request that fencing around the Capitol be permanent and that backup security forces should be stationed close to the Capitol, ready to deploy quickly. The request got immediate brushback from Democratic Congressman Jake Auchincloss, who said, quote, it is a mistake to turn the home of our democracy into a fortress. Earlier today, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser said she doesn't want security fencing to be a permanent fixture in Washington, but said the city will have added security for the impeachment trial of former President Donald Trump and President Joe Biden's address to Congress in the coming weeks. There are still some very volatile events happening. Um, which require extra security. Meantime, new details on a tense arrest near the foot of the Capitol. A man from West Virginia taken into custody by Capitol Hill police after parking his car in the middle of this intersection. Police say he had in his car a handgun and 20 rounds of ammunition, that he had literature with him saying, stop the steal, a list of lawmakers with contact information, and that he was shouting at National Guardsmen protecting the Capitol. The man's pleaded not guilty to three weapons charges. It comes as more than 30 members of the House, worried about their safety after the January 6th assault on the Capitol, appealed to Speaker Nancy Pelosi for more flexibility in spending their allowances on protection, including security for them in their home districts. Pelosi said she's working on it, but then made a stunning comment. The enemy is within the House of Representatives. A, a threat that members are concerned about in addition to what is happening outside. Pelosi was asked what she meant by that. It means that we have members of Congress who want to bring guns on the floor and have threatened uh, violence on other members of Congress. Pelosi didn't say who specifically she was referring to. Capitol Police did investigate an incident last week when a Republican lawmaker was stopped by a metal detector from bringing a concealed gun onto the House floor. That congressman, Andy Harris, hasn't commented on the incident. There's no indication Harris meant to harm anyone. But experts say members of Congress face other threats in the wake of the Capitol attack. The risk here is that lone actors will you know, take this opportunity to you know, further an ideology by a single violent act, whether that is you know, uh, engaging in some sort of uh, you know, physical harm, destruction of property. This comes as investigators are still scrambling to identify who left pipe bombs outside Republican and Democratic headquarters on January 6th. A top ATF official telling CNN the mysterious would-be bomber remains a serious threat. This person may not be from the region and may be from other parts of the country. We could potentially be building more bombs right now. And just a short time ago in federal court here in Washington, a pretty dramatic moment, the chief judge of the federal court here in Washington, Judge Beryl Howell, ruled that Richard Barnett, the man who bragged about putting his feet up on House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's desk during the riots, that Mr. Barnett should stay in jail as he awaits trial. Judge Howell also scolded other defendants in the Capitol riots cases, saying, quote, this was not a peaceful protest. Hundreds of people came to Washington, D.C. to disrupt the peaceful transfer of power. That man, Richard Barnett, 
Barnett has not entered a plea, but he did speak to the court today saying that he has simple explanations for what happened and that he's a good man. Wolf. Brian Todd reporting for us. Uh, Brian, thank you. Let's get uh, some new details right now about a meeting between the former president, Donald Trump, and the House GOP leader, Kevin McCarthy. Our chief national affairs correspondent, Jeff Zeleny, is joining us. Jeff, Republicans are trying uh, to repair some deep divides that exist within the GOP right now. How did this meeting go? Well, just a week after Donald Trump left office in disgrace as only the second president in U.S. history to be impeached, many Republicans were eager to turn the page and reclaim their party. But House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy made clear today it is still the party of Trump as he asked for the former president's help winning back the House majority in 2022 in another sign of the deep disarray in the GOP. The American flag is proudly waving today at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort. But the shining sun belies the storm brewing inside the Republican Party. Kevin McCarthy, the House GOP leader, made a pilgrimage to Florida, hoping to get back into the former president's good graces after angering Trump following the deadly attack on the Capitol. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. McCarthy has been backpedaling ever since, making clear he still sees Trump as the leader of the Republican Party, a view not shared by Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, who hasn't spoken to Trump in more than a month. The Mar-a-Lago meeting was focused on taking back the House in 2022, Trump aide said in a statement, adding, his endorsement means more than perhaps any endorsement at any time. With his looming impeachment trial, Trump remains front and center in the Republican Party, even as it faces an identity crisis. In a private call with House Republicans this week, McCarthy admonished his members to stop the infighting, CNN has learned, bluntly saying to cut that crap out with no more attacks on one another. But he's done little to actually stop it, with Florida Congressman Matt Gates, a loyal Trump ally, traveling to Wyoming today to try taking down Liz Cheney the number three House Republican who voted for Trump's impeachment. If you want to prove that you have the power, defeat Liz Cheney in this upcoming election, and Wyoming will bring Washington to its knees. The GOP turmoil is playing out as a series of sideshows, none louder than Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, who deleted her social media posts after CNN reported she harassed victims of the Parkland school shooting and endorsed violence against Democratic lawmakers. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. That's what happens. People will still do mass shootings. They're That's right. being used by the left because you're young. The congresswoman, who has promoted QAnon conspiracy theories, was given a plump seat on the House Education and Labor Committee. Illinois Congressman Adam Kinzinger, one of 10 House Republicans to support Trump's impeachment, said the party is at a dangerous crossroads. Well, let's be clear, she's not a Republican. I personally don't think she should have any committees. A fear of reining in fringe Republican elements has created an opening for Democrats, which Speaker Nancy Pelosi seized on today. Assigning her to the education committee when she has mocked the killing of little children at Sandy Hook Elementary School, when she has mocked the killing of teenagers in high school at the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School, what could they be thinking? David Hogg, the Parkland student who was the subject of Taylor Greene's harassment, telling CNN he had a message for Leader McCarthy. If you say this is not your party, actually call it out and hold her accountable. Now, in a statement tonight, Congresswoman Greene brushed off the criticism and defended her actions, saying, they are coming after me because they know I represent the people, not the politicians. They are coming after me, she says, because like President Trump, I will always defend conservative values. They want to take me out because I represent the people, and they absolutely hate it. Now, well, for all these questions inside the GOP, one thing is clear. President Trump, former President Trump, is here to stay. Yeah.